to kick. Let's not waste any time. Let's get right into it. You know what I mean? So, yes, kink belongs at Pride, and I want my kids to see it. Children need to know that they can make their own ways in the world. Okay, let me just turn my mic up just a little. Hopefully that's not too loud. If it is, turn me down. <clears throat> Our family often took the train into Philadelphia, but as we rode across the bridge to attend the city's Pride Parade five years ago, my leg's wife bounced with nervous jitter. She squeezed my hand, worried that if she might run into a colleague or be harassed by a stranger. My wife is trans, so this must be a man, who wasn't out at the time, so they typically only express her authentic authenticity in the privacy of our home, which is fine. That morning, she wore a green skirt and light up light makeup, brushing her hair to one side. Even though we attended pride marches and protests in previous years, that day was our first celebrating openly as a family. Okay, let's just uh. Okay. So. <sighs> So I want to read this part. So these members of the community were celebrating who they are and what they like to do. Um, oh, okay, well, actually, let's read this whole part. When, when our children grew tired of marching, we plopped onto a nearby curb. Just as we got settled in, our elementary schooler pointed in the direction of an oncoming float, raising an eyebrow at a bare-chested man in dark glasses with black suspenders clipped into a leather thong. The man paused them to be spanked. Yeah. The the man paused to be spanked playfully by a partner with a flog. What are they doing? My curious kid asked. As a toddler. As our toddler cheered them on. The pair was the the, the pair was the first of a few dozen kinksters who danced down the street uh, laughing together as they twirled their whips and batons. Some leading companion uh some leading companions by leashes at the time my children were too young to understand the nuance of the situation but i told them the truth that these folks were members of the community celebrating um who they are and what they like to do the key community has participated in pride since its inception risking their jobs and safety to be authentically themselves in public why why do they need to be themselves in public why is it not okay to just keep that in the house still every year as pride month approaches a uh uh, debate erupts about whether kink belongs at Pride at all. Those hoping to oust kinksters often cite the presence of children at their top concern. Yeah. That was pointedly the case this year when Twitter argued that kink at Pride is a highly sexualized experience that children should be children from. Thousands of supported users, uh, thousands of users supported these posts claiming that kink at Pride crossed the line because minors attend those events. I agree that Pride should be a welcoming place for children and teens, but policing how others show up doesn't protect or uplift young people. Instead, hom homogenizing self-expression at Pride will do more than uh, do more harm to our children than good. When my own children caught glimpses of King, they got to see the career co uh, company and companies in so many more non-traditional ways of being, living, and loving. All right, get to your point. Uh -huh. Sorry, guys, I'm going to get into the part I was reading. Okay, here we go. Children who witness kink culture are reassured that alternative experiences of sexuality and expressions are valid. No matter who they become as they mature, helping them recognize that their personal experiences aren't bad or wrong. But where do they learn this stuff? That's my thing. Is when you're talking about them seeing it's not a, it's, it's okay, where do they learn these kinks? If they're specifically learning these kinks of wanting to be a dog, a cat, having their booty spanked in front of all these people with leather thongs on, if they're seeing that all at the pride parade and you're telling me it's perfectly okay, that means when the day comes that they become somewhat sexually curious, If obviously if they're not going to church or anything and they're just opening themselves up to the world's version of all this stuff so they'll probably get into porn you didn't 
they're going to start learning from this stuff immediately as a child. So, of course, they're more than likely going to fall into a kink because you just taught them that it was okay. And every year they go to this, and it's such a big thing, and you make it so normal because they're children, so they can be easily, easily um, have their mind formulated that this is okay. Are you teaching them about other stuff? Are you allowing them to go... Uh, are you taking them to church every week to take uh, I mean are you doing that are you taking them to a therapy session every week or are you only taking them to stuff that's sexually deviant are you taking them to anything that's wholesome that's my question or is it only you're only taking them to stuff that's sexually deviant and telling them to be themselves are you are you taking them to other kind of stuff are you taking them to business meetings are you taking them to engineers for kids are you taking them to all this other stuff is that stuff important probably not because it would make no sense now would it you only talk about this kind of stuff in this kink community if it was okay for children because it comes to sex and it allows you to validate yourself because you don't give this same rigorous or same kind of fight for all the religious stuff that goes on. You don't give this same kind of fight for being part of a STEM community, part of all this other stuff. You want them to just know about sex and whipping each other's butts. It's crazy because that's all you're going to learn at a pride parade. Like there's nothing like honorable to learn at a pride parade in my opinion. I can't think of a more relevant or more important reminder for the youth who often struggle with feelings of isolation and confusion. Where did the confusion come from? Because when kids are confused most of the time, it's because their community or the people around them are making them feel confused. If their parents, and I know every kid's not going to have this, but let's just say their parents are very involved in their life in having these adult conversations with them. They're probably going to be less confused, but if really there are kids to just get on their cell phones and get on their tablets and just say, hey, figure it out, of course they're going to be confused. By the time they're seven, eight years old, they're going to be seeing all these other adults coming on there saying, hey, do you want to experience trans joy? Are you depressed? Are you sad? And you, these little kids are going to start asking themselves, am I sad? Am I depressed? I don't know. Because they don't. Because nobody's talking to them. We just throw them out to the, to the wind and let them go to the people who are completely extreme. I can't think of a, uh, um, a confusion as they discover more about themselves and wrestle with their concerns about being whether they're normal. See, whether they're normal enough. Who compared to who? Like, what is considered normal? Just being straight? Because I'm straight, and I've felt weird. There's a lot of straight people who don't feel like they fit in some places, right? Because we all have to find our place in this world. Because we're all weird in our own way, and we all find our stuff. Some people might find football fans weird. Some people may find NBA fans weird. Some people may find people who play pickleball weird, right? People find people who watch anime weird. So what is this concept of just feeling normal enough because what we always want is the opposite of normal is a completely sexual deviant that's what i always see when people say normal straight vanilla they the, the other side of the thing is oh we're talking about people who have sex with multiple people of all colors of all races and we they have sex every night guy girl animal <sighs> oh my goodness uh, including kicking uh, right, open spaces for families to have necessary and powerful conversations with young people about health, safety, consent, and faith. Oh, nope, faith not in there. Uh, most uniquely pleasure. Most uniquely pleasure. Pride open space for families to have necessary conversation, necessary powerful conversations with young about health, safety, consent, and therapy. Nope, therapy's not in there, sorry. And counseling. Nope, that's not in there. Uh, and mental health. Nope, that's not even in there. Most uniquely, pleasure. Kink visibility is a reminder that any person can and should be shameless about exploring what. See, once again, it's all about this 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 feeling of I don't don't judge me. I was watching a video the other day where a woman said that she cheated on her husband with her cousin, and she shouldn't be judged about that. What? You cheated. You, had, you were an adulterer. You, you went out and had sex with somebody else who's not your husband. You don't expect us to say anything. And, you know, people love people love to go to those kind of radio shows. People love going places. If you go to those pages where it's like, no judgment here, tell us about yourself, people are going to tell you the most disgusting thing ever. And then you get real people out there and say, yeah, I've had this many things with minors. Okay, we're not going to judge. What? Judge. Hey, what happened to accountability? If you cheat on your husband, we need to have a conversation. Why do you, people who don't want no judgment about that kind of stuff are people who they have something going on. They need to go somewhere, go get some help. Okay, they need to really have, go to some meetings every week. 
because people who want to open to be okay with this kind of stuff say, I just want to shamelessly, I just want to show my kink. I want to, y'all saw the video we just made. Oh, I just want to pull out my, my, my testicles and penis in front of children. And I don't want to be ashamed about that. Because that's what be happening at these pride parades. They're literally naked people. We saw naked men at a pride parade with their testicles hanging out, fully butt naked in front of children. Then we had another one where women, a whole, a whole, like, what was that? A hundred and something women all got their breasts hanging out, making out with each other with little girls running around. I just want to be shameless. What? And it's not. <sighs> <clears throat> Sharing the language of kink culture with young people provides them with valuable information about safe sex. It's always about sex, such as the importance of establishing boundaries, safe words, signals. What boundaries? Y'all have zero boundaries. What boundaries? It's the, when they say establishing boundaries, they're talking about when you're doing BDSM and there's secret words and all this kind of stuff. But because they say safe words. But what boundaries do y'all get in front of the children? Is there no boundary? Like, what is too far? I just want to know these people who will go to a pride parade naked with a little boy ne walking next to them. What is too far? If you touch the little boy, like what, where's the line get drawn at that point? Like we saw the thing with, we know little, oh man. We don't have to get too deep, but we know little kids get invited to these parties. We know that happens. So where's the line really drawn? They're just trying to make it more acceptable, guys. Let's not be stupid. <sighs> Let's finish this part and we'll go on. Uh, affirming the importance of planning and research and the need to uh, uh, seek and give enthusiastic consent. I never want my children to worry that exploring any aspect of consensual sex or touch is too taboo. Yep. Yep. Man, y'all let me know what y'all think, man. I just... I just think that this kind of stuff, when people talk about let's open our kids up to kink stuff and all that, it's just, so I'm sorry, it's just another form of manipulation, another form of getting them to do these sexual acts eventually, because I don't think there will be any kind of boundaries. I think as long as we keep making the line really gray and there is no black and white, the more gray there is, the more our children are in trouble. It just makes my heart hurt, man. Um... We really got to protect these kids, but I feel like nobody cares about them. But a lot of people care about these kids. Don't get me wrong, but it's just it's just sad to see that people really want to do surgeries on kids. They want to do all these things to these little kids, and it's just like it's the people who empower. And there's so many of us that are standing up against it. And in fact, I think most people are against it, but they really want to gaslight people and really get to their emotions. It sounds like a whole cult trying to happen, but... We're not going to let this happen. We're going to keep speaking up every single day, no matter what. They can spit in our face. They can scream. They can um, yell and go insane. But we're not going to give in to this delusion anymore. When it comes to our children, and now, even more so now, it comes to our children, we're going to stop this. And I'm to the point where I'm going to stop this from even happening to adults just getting sucked into this cult. Okay? If they choose to go to the cult, that's them. But we're going to give them the information, give them the truth, and be like, you don't have to do this stuff. You don't have to mutilate your body. You don't have to do any of this when you're struggling with the mental illness. If you really feel like you want to take off your body parts, that's a mental illness, and we're here to help you. It's not okay for us to just let you do this to yourself and ruin your life. Because when you finally snap and realize that this stuff doesn't matter, you become more depressed and more want to take your life even more. We're not going to just let you fall. We'll show you what it means to really care about you. Not like the other side tells you. Just do it. Good luck. We're going to actually be here to help you. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Y'all have a great night. Peace.